Minecraft Hardcore 100 Days, a Minecraft challenge where you survive 100 days within Hardcore Minecraft, meaning if you die, you lose everything. One life, one chance. Greetings one and all, my name is Macetech, and welcome to an experimental modded Minecraft video where I tackled the 100 days hardcore challenge that's been floating around here on YouTube for some time. These 100 days was heavily influenced and inspired off of Luke the Notable as well as Eclipse. Luke influenced 100 Days, whereas EQ did it with mods. And being a modded Minecrafter, it would just be wrong not to. And as most 100 Days here on YouTube, they're all unique in their own way. The unique spin I'm doing is playing through the Tingle's Construct mod, with a few small side mods. For those that don't know, Tingle's Construct is a weapons, tool, and armor building and constructing mod. It allows for limitless customization and combinations with all kinds of materials, upgrades, and abilities some of which you'll see throughout these next 100 days. There's also a few goals that I want to achieve. Make a full set of Tinker's tools, you'll soon see what I mean. Craft all the guidebooks and Tinkers, there's six in total. And of course, beat the Ender Dragon. Now, let's begin. Day one, I started out by creating the world and spawning in a mangrove swamp biome, which is great considering I was surrounded by wood, but the wood is obscenely annoying to gather by hand. However, to my surprise, there was an outlier here, a singular oak tree. I drop it down, as you do, and start making my first steps in the Tinker's Construct. In Tinker's, and like any mod these days, you have a backbone item. This item was a pattern, which is made of two sticks and two planks, giving you three patterns. Now having a pattern, I needed to make two workstations in order to actually start tinkering. These workstations were a tinker station and a part builder. And as the name suggests, one allows me to start crafting very crude weapon and tool parts whereas the other allows me to combine these parts into creating the tools needed to progress further in these 100 days. And the first tool I start to make, which I regret making at first, is a pick adds. Yeah, not a pickaxe, a pick adds. What this tool allows is the ability to mine stone, dirt, sand, and gravel. Basically, it was just a really, really weak combo of a wooden pickaxe and a shovel. I then got around to making an axe, or in Tinker's case, a hand axe. Nothing's changed with this tool, still functions the same as an axe. I then pack up my things and start venturing forth, leaving the mangrove swamp in which I spawned in hopes to find somewhere to call home. Along the way, I grab some basic resources as they would be needed for later on tinkering. Oh, I forgot to mention, the best thing with tinkers is that you won't have to worry about your tools breaking. They will break, but be in something called a broken state. But fear not, as you can repair your tools with a repair kit which Tinkers has a wide variety to offer depending on your tools and what they're made of. But right now, the night was closing in fast, and I haven't even found a place to make my own. I haven't even got a bed, and this is day one. Thankfully, I come across a meadow full of sheep, and a village too, jackpot. I quickly made a bed and slept the first night onto day two. Day two, with the village over the hill I found after exploring on day one, I did some pillaging, found almost a full set of iron armor and two diamonds. I snagged a few other things from the village, killed the local guard, and ventured forth the lands. Found another village, did some more pillaging, and killed another local guard. What? I need the iron. Then it was on to day three. Day three. It was at this point I needed to find somewhere to call home. But before doing so, I found a cave with a small large cavern poking out of it. Wasn't much in there though. But I also didn't want to go caving so early as being cautious was the aim of the game for me in these 100 days. So I grabbed some moss, made a boat, and carried on my adventure. After some boating around, I was very surprised to have found a mushroom biome, and there was no clearer answer than to settle here. But before doing so, I found a shipwreck, looted that, I then got to the island, plundered all the local resources atop the island, and carried on to day 4. Day 4, I began this day by planting down some trees for my source of wood. Cause the thing with mushroom biomes and islands, yeah, they're always fully spawn proof from all mobs in existence, but there's no clear way or renewable source of wood from this place. Aside from that little floor, plenty of food, you know, cause mushroom, cows and such. I then set up shop by plotting out my main work area for both tinkers and just general use interaction. Afterwards, I upgraded most of my tools to stone tier and also made myself a new tool called a matic. And what a matic does is essentially what a hoe, shovel and axe do all combined. I then did some slight terraforming around the area as I was yet to cool area in my home base. Plant some more trees and began to work on another source of food aside from the mushrooms and steak I'm yet to live on. 
finally concluded day 4 by starting to dig a staircase down all the way to diamond level. However, I got a little under halfway. Day 5, I put the mineshaft staircase on hold as I wanted to get my hands into the mix with making something called a smeltery. But before doing so, I needed the baby of that called the melter. And before doing that, I needed grout. And to get grout, I need to combine clay, sand and gravel, cook it in a furnace and start making seared bricks. Seared bricks being the backbone to all the smeltery based stuff within Tinkers. After almost drowning a few times, I got enough of the resources required to begin melting down things. Day 6. I took this time to go caving in my little caves once again to try and find any untapped minerals and resources which could be used later on. While doing so, I lit up the caves because I wasn't sure if mobs could still spawn on the ground, even though I was still within the perimeter of a mushroom biome. Some caving and resource gathering later, I came back to start using my melt to help the progression towards making my smeltery. Now to make the smeltery, you need a smeltery controller, a fuel gauge, a few drains, a basin, and table, and a lot of seared bricks. The smeltery parts were easy to get, however the gathering of the bricks would prove to be trivial. I did find a way to progress faster, which is simply to grab a ridiculous amount of clay, any kind of stone block, cobble, diorite, granite, andesite, etc, and poured the molten clay on top of the blocks within the basin. I then finally finished off day 6 by making one of the many 6 books or guides to help me with tinkering within the tinkers. Day 7. This was short lived as within the first 30 seconds or so, a thunderstorm comes out of nowhere and ruins my day. But all I was doing was continuing what I was previously doing, just making more seared bricks to progress with making my smeltery. Day 8. Was filled with mostly a lot of seared stone casting, farming and more seared stone casting. I eventually got enough seared stone to start constructing my smeltery. Now another thing I want to state with regarding the smeltery, with each block layer of seared bricks used to build it up, it expands the amount of smeltable items within it. Meaning if you were to build it to its max block limit, which I believe is 15 high, then you'll be able to fit more than two stacks of any meltable resource within it. Day 9. I made more additions to the smeltery, growing it to level 3, did some tree chopping, then set sail for resources in need for both the smeltery and just general use stuff. I'm pretty sure I also went to find some lava and dripstone for infinite lava farm, found a few monuments around the local ocean area, as well as a ruined portal. Couldn't find the chest though. Afterwards, I set sail in search of some land to sleep the night away. Day 10. Double digits. Let's go. Once again, setting sail in the open oceans, found another island, had nothing of use. I then found a shipwreck just off the shore of the island I found just before and looted it for all its goodies. Found some more land and this looked promising. As I found the spruce forest, grabbed some of the wooden saplings to go back home, I would later regret not grabbing more saplings. And when I said I was in search of lava, I was in fact correct as I grabbed myself a singular bucket of lava. I then carried on, finding a cave that went all the way down to deep slate, thought I'd try my hand at gathering some resources, but was later spooked by the horrors of the underground being a skeleton. Not a close call, but ever since these guys got buffed way back when, I've been living in fear of them since. After getting out of that perilous situation, I found a small pumpkin patch and snagged them for myself to potentially use later on. Spoiler, I in fact never planted them. However, the pumpkin would come in handy for the dragon fight. Day 11. Not much happened, just ran around in search of a dripstone cave, all the while finding and discovering wacky terrain generation. However, did not find the dripstone cave. Day 12. Still running around like a headless chook looking for a dripstone cave. Oh my god. Finally, I grabbed as much as I could before booking it out of the cave due to mobs starting to spawn like wildfire. I then came across another village with a pretty cool structure because of one of the mods I had installed for these 100 days. This structure has the copper golem. Yeah, the mob from the Minecraft Live mob vote in 2021. I didn't vote for this little guy, but they are cute little things. Day 13. For the majority of the day, I spent it boating home. And after finally making it back to the majestic mushroom island I called home, I set up an infinite lava farm as lava was required to start and fuel the smells free to be able to melt down majority of low to mid tier metals. Day 14, I finally got back to continuing my very staircase to get down to diamond level, while also finding some pretty good resources. Didn't make it all the way though as my pickaxe broke and I didn't have any repair kits to fix it. Damn it. Day 15, started up by just doing some general maintenance around the area, tree chopping, ore melting and also made some new tools. Made myself a very basic tinker stone sword using deep slate and upgraded my stone pickaxe to iron. There's going to be a lot of things I say in regards to tinkers, but here's Here's a couple things to know. You can make tool parts based on the material used. For example, the deep slate is what I made. Yes, it's made of stone, but the deep slate texture is applied to it. So in other words, depending on the material type used, you can have the texture of said material on said tool parts. I also use some gold to create a permanent cast to create other metal based parts from either my melter or smeltery. I then carried on digging out my staircase down the diamond level, but I stopped halfway down as I heard some weird sounds from the cave surrounding me. So I started digging towards the sounds and what I found was something called an ortoise, which from the name given 
given to these mystical creatures. They drop ores from their shells with the tap of a pickaxe. These ores can grow back, but are random every time. Not sure how often the ores grow back though, that's a mystery for another day. And upon venturing further into the case system I discovered, I started hearing a frequent amount of zombies nearby. So I did what any responsible amateur hardcore player would do and dug towards it. And lo and behold, I found a zombie spawner. Now, if only I remember that I had it and made a farm for it in these 100 days. Spoiler. I completely forgot about it. I also got super unlucky with the spawner because it had no chest. Day 16, nothing special happened today, just a lot of waiting around for some lava to generate. Did some slight terraforming again, collected some of my harvest from my crops, and started sorting all my riches and precious resources into my backpack. Day 17, more progress in the mines. I found an underwater cavern with lots of coal. I also finally made it to diamond level and started strip mining for diamonds, no luck. However, the method I started using, I realized wasn't the best, as later on I would make a tinker's tool to help with mining more efficiently. Day 18, I was able to finally complete the lava generator setup I had. I can't recall when I got the second source though. I then decided to start go deep sea diving to find buried treasures and useful resources. I also looted a shipwreck and went venturing in search of buried treasure from a map I found from said shipwreck, but that would have to wait for the next day. Day 19, with the buried treasure map in hand, I saw that I was very close to unearthing the treasure. I eventually found it and looted it. Setting sail towards more land, I saw a ruined portal in the corner of my eye and went to loot its chest but decided against taking its content, because they were crap. Found another shipwreck, yoinked all the loot, at least the stuff that was useful, discovered a second shipwreck shortly afterwards, again, looting and scooting for all it had, did some more underwater ruin looting, disturbed the locals so I kill- I mean, gave them a friendly hello. Yep. Day 20, I continued shipwreck hunting and buried treasure looting, and upon doing so, I discovered an ice spikes biome. Aren't these biomes ridiculously rare or something? Hold up. Goodness gracious, these biomes have a 0.11% chance of spawning. I guess I got lucky with my seed. I also discovered a village here as well. Looted all that was worth looting. I found six obsidian too, which was actually a huge step because it means I won't have to wait days upon days to create a portal. Not to say six blocks is enough, I just have a huge head start before creating the portal frame. And found some cursed sugarcane generated on sand next to a frozen lake. Day 21. Found another shipwreck. I've lost track of how many I discovered at this point. I uncovered some more buried treasure. Again, lost track of how many I found. Disturbed the underwater economy and stole all their goods. Another shipwreck, looted and scooted. I then found an underwater geode. Didn't get anything from it, and I can't exactly remember why. I also lost this geode later on when trying to find it again. Day 22, from all the looting that I did, I found a skyroot sapling, which if planted, I would have a slow but nice supply of sky slime for tinkers. Unfortunately, I couldn't grow it without slimy dirt or grass, which comes from the islands that I have been boating past for the last several days. If I had known this, I would have gotten some. Sometimes I get frustrated at the lack of my own knowledge and stupidity. Anyway, it's at this point I remember I have a world map mod, which I keep on for the remainder of these 100 days. I can also set waypoints, which I do use later on, just in a time because I was being stubborn. Finally decided to start filling my smeltery, but one measly bucket wasn't going to be enough. I then went on to creating a small pen for a couple of mushrooms so that I could breed and have a close supply of mushroom soup, steak, and leather. And in addition to the pen, I upgraded my storage a little further. Finally. It only took me 19 days after calling this place home. Also, remember that geode I found back just before and lost? Yeah, I discovered another one closer to my home. This is one of the things I waypoint again, was just too stubborn at the time to do so. Also, the amethyst will come in use later on for tinker stuff, just remember that. Oh, this is a big one. Alright, cool. Day 23. With those mushrooms I captured, I mean, that came along with me of their own free will, I bred them up to start getting a slow supply of potential steak and leather. Also, remember when I said I would later use the amethyst for tinker stuff? Yeah, we're doing that today. Allow me to show you alloying with tinkers. In the middle I'm alloying is something called amethyst bronze, which is made up by combining some copper and amethyst within the smeltery. I I would later on need some block form to make my next step toward the Tinker's advancements within the mod. But I realized that I needed to make some drains in order to actually take out the molten minerals. Another fun thing with the smeltery as well, when melting the ores, you're able to get more out of the ore. Let me paint you a picture. Say you melt down one raw iron. From this, you'll get one iron ingot and three iron nuggets. But melt three raw iron, you'll get three iron ingots of course, but because you get three nuggets per piece, you'll get an extra ingot as the smeltery automatically combines a nugget into ingot form for you after being melted down. Hope that was easy to follow along with. Now going back to gathering the amethyst bronze, I needed three blocks to create something called a Tinker's Anvil. There are multiple variations of this workstation, but I'm making the amethyst bronze one as it's the easiest and the cheapest one to make. 
and with the anvil in hand I can finally start tinkering with a new set of weapons and tools which are under the broad variety and you'll soon see what these things can do. But before I can even start creating these tools I need to make casts that are permanent to create many and multiple tool parts if and when required. Another thing I needed was the next book to help act as my guide when it came to understanding the item tiers and stats. Day 24, with my new book in hand I started doing some research in regards to what tool parts I wanted to make versus what I was able to make. And it's a good thing I checked some of these parts because oh boy was there a lot of stuff taken. One thing they may be that each material used for the making of parts applies a unique characteristic effect. For example, the waddle, the effect this gives when parts are made of it allows the player to deal bleeding damage to mobs dealing more damage because of the bleed. And each material that is able to be made into parts of the tool or weapon you're making will have their own individual unique effect. I then begin to construct my nether portal frame, some general maintaining around my area, and every so often when lava generates, add an extra obsidian to my portal frame. Also, with me having done some research on tool parts, I start to finally cast tool parts to construct myself a sledgehammer. Day 25, finally made it a quarter of the way there. Yes! The final piece of my sledgehammer requires slime, which I don't have. Thankfully, I know of an easy and early game way of gathering slime. Remember those islands that are either just sitting on top of the ocean or in a sky that has sailed past? Those are called slime islands. 25 days in, don't have to worry about slime chunks or moon phases. So I head to the closest island near me and gather myself some slime from these jelly-like blocks called congealed slime blocks. And I'm also just noticing now that the liquid I'm in gives me constant luck. I could use that for something. I head back home to melt down the slime as I needed to pour onto a wooden tool part, but I'm out of fuel. Cramp. So while waiting, I remember another thing you can do with the Tinker's Anvil. You can upgrade and give abilities to your tools. I have some diamonds to spare from earlier looting, so why not upgrade my current iron pickaxe to a diamond tier 1. This however does mean I'll need to make diamond repair kits. Day 26, I finally start to actually build myself a place I can go home. Spoiler, I get distracted because I was able to get my nether portal sorted. But before I went into the nether, I mapped out the area of my house so I could give myself a clear guideline for how big I wanted to build. Wasn't anything too big, nor was it fancy as I was lacking a lot of certain materials which either I couldn't be bothered going in search for, or was too impatient waiting for things to be done. Did some terraforming to form the land around my house house, more framework around the house with what materials I had, then called it a day. Day 27, I did some looking into something called plate armor within Tingus as this was new territory for me. I've played Tingus since day 1 when it first initially released, till the latest version which for me was 1.16, but plate armor had been slightly introduced. However, there was only one variation of the armor. Now in 1.19 Tinkers, you're able to make fully customizable plate armor, like with tools and weapons, which I'll get to soon. Being in weapons and tools, I was finally able to get my slime melted down to create the last tool part for my sledgehammer. Finally constructed my hammer, did some more house construction, and after a hard days of work, I made my day harder by deciding to venture into the nether realm where I met the local piglin scouts. <sighs> this is where things got a little dicey and scary on my part because in hardcore, I've only ever gotten to the nether once. I escaped with just under half my health remaining. Whew, that was a close call. And trust me, that isn't the last you'll see of me getting almost scared half to death. Days 28 to 29, I went back into the nether to face my fears. Came into close contact with a few hoglins and piglins, dealt with them with ease, and with my new Tinker's tool in tow, I utilized its digging properties to dig myself a 3x3 tunnel to safely traverse across the nether. Oh, did I forget to mention? All broad variant tools within Tinker's are capable of digging or working in 3x3 areas. There are some exceptions like the broad axe and vein hammer, which I'll get to later. After breaking into open territory outside of my tunnel, I found a geode, but this was filled with orange gems instead of the purple ones we usually see. That's because this geode is a slime crystal geode, and there are four variants of slime crystals. Earth, Sky, Ikor, and End. The one I found is an Ikor geode, which is native only to the nether. Also, I've mainly come to the nether for one thing, but I find something else in a bit. The first thing I'm after, which is also only found within the nether, is nether cobalt, as the name suggests. This dark blue mineral will help with making tougher and sturdier tools and weapons later on within these 100 days for tinkers. After running around and scavenging for as much cobalt as I could, I discover a fortress. Wasn't really what I was looking for, but hey, I'll take it. Stole, ahem, <coughs> borrowed all the nether wolf within the fortress, killed a few wither skeletons, and scored my first wither skull. Now, just to clarify, I had nothing on the sword I used. No looting, no other enhancements, nothing. I just got real lucky with that. Found a blaze spawner, however, was terrified as these guys were spawning like wildfire. I did also find a wolf forest, which would later come in handy when getting pearls. I then left the fortress with all my loot that I had scooted from the fortress and other parts of the nether then played some ping pong with this ghast. Spoiler, I won. Day 30, went back to the nether, but not for anything special, just went to grab some lava. As you know, the nether floor is 
kind of covered in the stuff. I then started melting down the cobalt I had gathered from the previous two days and start getting myself some plate armor sorted. It takes me some time to figure out how to make the cast patterns, cause I made temporary ones out of sand as I didn't have enough gold to create permanent ones. I yet again got distracted by something else, and that was chopping down a massive 2x2 spruce tree I planted some days ago. If you haven't figured it out yet, I get distracted quite a fair bit in these 100 days. Day 31, I continue on casting my plate armor pieces. Now this is when I should mention how to actually make these armor sets. So you first make the armor parts, helm, chest, legs, and boots from either temporary or permanent casts. Then you cast something called a mail, which essentially is what chain mail is made of, according to some research. And then you take your armor pieces with the mail you have at the ready, combine them together with the Tinker's anvil, and voila, you have yourself some plate armor. Now I didn't use this armor for fighting the dragon, as I'm still yet to learn about how the plate armor works and the best combinations to make with it. I do however use the armor I've made for a good remainder of 100 days. Goodbye eye armor, hello cobalt plate armor. Day 32, almost finished building the house, but needed to wait for materials to be smelted. I bred the mushrooms, then headed down to the mine to begin strip mining with my brand new sledge hammer. Now it was time to dig efficiently, and I kid you not, within a couple minutes of mining with the hammer, I found diamonds and it was a five vein. I do dig them up, which I now regret doing as I could have waited till I tinkered around with either my hammer or pickaxe to give it some fortune. After almost a full day of strip mining, my hammer breaks and I hadn't prepared any repair kits to fix it while I was in the mines. So I ventured in search of the geo I found back on day 22 and when you know it, I lost it cause I was too stubborn to waypoint the blasted thing. I do eventually find it, gather some amethyst and finally let my lesson and waypoint the damn geode. Thank goodness. If I could slap my past off for being dumb, I would. Day 33. I made myself some repair kits to, well, repair my broken hammer. Finally finished building the house, went back into the mines, but to look for copper as that was the one thing I was lacking somehow. If you've forgotten, <laughs> pardon me. If you've forgotten, copper is one of the two core resources needed to alloy amethyst bronze. I decided to also drain out my smeltery of molten metals that weren't needed within it, one being rose gold. It'll be handy at some point in time, but every time I have gold in the smeltery, the copper alloys with the gold. I don't need rose gold. Frustrations aside, I start to work on my next broadsword, which is a cleaver. Now, what is a cleaver? For those wondering, it's a broadsword that gives the ability and higher drop rates for head and skulls off of mobs. Meaning, this tool is ideal for farming with the skeleton skulls. Days 34 to 36, over these next few days, I traverse through the treacherous regions within the nether. Gathered cobalt, played some more ping pong with a ghast, and you remember that warp forest I found when I found the fortress? I spent some time gathering pearls to later on find the stronghold. I also lost track of time. I had a few close calls, because the endermen wouldn't get into the boat trap I placed for me to easily keep and kill them. What? I don't particularly want to get smacked around like a ragdoll. I then got lost, because I didn't make a proper trail back to the portal, so I just safely tunneled back to my portal. I also had no food, and particularly didn't want to have my backside blasted by gas or bat by picklins. Day 37. I started constructing my third broad tool, this being the broad axe. I then gathered materials to make myself a cast chest, which would literally whoa. I then gathered materials to make myself a cast chest, which would wait to a later date. Day 38 to 39. Started off making myself a bunch of repair kits as I would be traversing back into the nether again. Also used my new broad axe tool to fell some trees, and I mean fell some trees. The broad axe, a the broad axe, axe, Ugh. the broad axe, axe. This is a tongue twister, good lord. The broad axe, axe, as if I had vein miner installed for a tree, as mining from the bottom of a tree will instantly chop it all down. However, I have to wait for the annoyingly long duration of leaves decaying away. I let it install a mod that makes this process faster. I enter back into the nether realm, beeline for the fortress, and start actually gathering the materials needed for the eyes of Ender, as I would be on the hunt for the stronghold in the coming days. Getting the eyes was the easy part. However, getting the blaze powder would prove to be a challenge. This was because when I approached the I was being cautious as a not get lit ablaze from, well, the blaze. But in doing so, I caused one too many blaze to spawn from the spawner. So I did what any responsible hardcore player would do, I cheesed the hell out of these guys. I then manned up, went around from a different angle, and ended up finding another spawner. So I took this opportune moment to make the area flat and flush to have an easier time gathering blaze rods and XP. And in between waiting for blazes spawn, I farmed the local enderman for pearls. You can never have too many pearls, you know? I felt I had gathered enough for the time I was in the nether and went back home. I would soon return for other things, mainly for the blaze. Day 40. I spent all my time in the strip mine. I started making the stairway a little less cramped as I wanted to stop smacking my forehead against the block before descending to the next block below. 
Then I stripped mine for useful minerals and also fixed up my previous strip tunnels, turning them into 3x3s as to match the rest of my tunnels. Day 41. I finally went to actually craft my cast chest. I thought I had all the correct resources needed for it, but apparently I can't distinguish the difference between deep sleep bricks and seared bricks. I don't know why I didn't just read the block I grabbed. I wouldn't be having this problem if I wasn't so stubborn by guessing. I blame the textures being almost the same. Also, remember back on day 25 when I upgraded my iron pickaxe to diamond tier and would need to worry about getting diamond repair kits and said it was a future me problem? Well, now it's future me and I was trying to figure out another workaround for repairing my pickaxe. Nothing was working. I could have just simply made another iron pick, upgraded a diamond, use it one for a bit and combine the two to make a brand new one, but that would later would not work as I did some tinkering with my current pickaxe. Anyway, I also took this time to make myself an excavator. This was essentially a vanilla shovel, only it digs any shovel based block in a 3x3 area as well as creates paths in the same manner as well. And to conclude day 41, I upgraded my storage once more. Day 42. With my storage have been given an upgrade, I started moving all my block based items from one storage area to the other. I then made some stairs using the abundance amount of deep slate at my disposal and finally built a much smoother transition going down and up from the strip mine. After doing so, did some more strip mining in hope to find some diamonds and holy crap, asking you shall receive. This time I was smart enough to not mine them up immediately and waited till I had some kind of fortune ability on one of my tools. So it was to the drawing board. I pulled out my mighty smelting book and did some reading and found the lucky effect that could be applied to some tools. Lucky was essentially fortune and the ability has five levels from what I can recall, but the luck would have to wait as it was going night time. Day 43. I went adventuring in search of the many materials needed to get the max lucky ability modifier applied to my pickaxe. Or at least the max level that was available from the default ability upgrade slots given to my pickaxe. Oh yeah, when making any Tinker's based weapon or tool, by default, you're given two upgrade slots and one ability slot. Now you may be asking, how is that worth anything? Allow me to explain. You're able to apply more upgrade and ability slots to weapons, tools, and even armor. Tinkers makes use of vanilla items to use as slotless upgrade abilities. Meaning, when using set items, you won't use any of your upgrade or ability slots. But in return with using set items, you will gain additional slots. Thus being able to upgrade certain parts of your tools and weapons to higher levels. There's a lot more to it than what I've just explained. So doing research and playing around will be something you'll need to figure out the best combo of modifiers and whatnot for your tools and weapons. Also, while adventuring for the materials needed for this upgrade, I found a few cute little critters wandering around in the wild. Aren't they just adorable? Days 44 to 46, after venturing in the wild getting what I needed, I then upgraded my pickaxe to the luckiest, which is the equivalent to Fortune 2. I then spent the majority of these next couple days in the mines in search of more diamonds and other valuables that I was able to gather. I also decided to go mob hunting in search of mainly stringing arrows, as I believe I wanted to make a vanilla bow, as I believe I wanted to, to make a vanilla bow at some point during these 100 days. Days 47 to 48. This is when I start preparing for the dragon fight. I made myself a max level enchanting setup and crafted myself some diamond armor. Enchanted set armor, all pieces having at least protection between levels 3 to 4. Some have unbreaking and that was about it. I also hadn't slept the last few nights away as I needed to kill some phantoms. However, this would prove to be a challenge and would come to a close call as they would spawn in an area filled with mobs. Yeah, not very smart of me, and I forgot how annoying these buggers were to kill. Minecraft, why do we have phantoms again? Anyway, I got up my frustrations, managed to get a couple phantom membrane. Not a lot, but it'll do. This was so that I could brew myself some slow falling potions for when I would eventually go and fight the dragon. I also tried to melt down some diamonds to make repair kits as my lucky pickaxe was looking worse for wear. This is when I realized that I needed blazing blood to melt diamonds down. Day 49. I enchanted my bow and got something pretty good. Power 3 and I'm breaking 3. And just like I was preparing in the last couple of days, I started to tinker with my current tools and weapons so that I would be able to dish out large damage. So I hit the books again and found something called Swift Strike, which as the name may suggest, makes said tool or weapon speed faster. And I needed a lot of amethyst for this. Oh, I was going to be applying this upgrade to my broad axe as that would be my main weapon throughout the rest of these 100 days. I then realized I would need more upgrade slots to get higher level of Swift Strike on my axe. So I did some research and remembered the few items that I could use to give and apply slot upgrade slots to my axe. This being any mob head variant and an end crystal. Day 50. Oh, we're halfway there. I did some more tinkering with my axe, then finally started to track down the stronghold. And it turns out the stronghold would be a lot closer to my base of operations than expected. Day 51. Still searching for the stronghold, turns out it was in the middle of the desert I had just found north of my home. Didn't find the portal room straight away, but found other goodies, found the library, and looted all that I could find. Also, I found a tough guy I'm holding an entire book. Can't remember what was on it though. Day 52. Still the stronghold, but right now I'm just dusting off all the bookshelves I was going to uh, repurpose. Yeah. 
That's it. I eventually find the portal room, but it came to another close call with a horde of silverfish just spawning like wildfire. I tell ya, it was not a great time to be a silverfish, that is. I also removed the spawner prior as it would more than likely cause trouble later on. I then placed in the eyes in the portal frame to unlock the end realm, being very cautious as I didn't want to slip and fall into the portal and be forced to fight the dragon as I was very underprepared. Side note, I remembered a clip from Phil's five year hardcore montage video where he was standing on the frame of the portal but somehow got sent to the end. This is mainly why I was being super cautious as I was paranoid that the bug may still have been in the game. Thankfully, that didn't happen and I carried onward. I placed two waypoints, one for the actual stronghold portal and one for a tunnel I made that goes directly into the portal room itself. Day 33, not a whole lot happened, go back home, did some general housekeeping in the base, casted a few repair kits, sorted up my loot from the stronghold adventure, but I decided to look into making a tinker's boat as I want to start diving into unknown territory again. Wasn't something I needed per se, but in order to become a master tinkerer, I gotta figure out how this stuff works. Day 54, I started forming together the materials I wanted and needed to construct my bow, but yet again, got distracted with other Tinker's things. I then realized I was missing any of the materials because I was using the wrong materials. This surprisingly happens quite a lot in these 100 days. So I ventured forth towards the desert north of my base again to gather some obsidian while waiting for the terrors of the night to spawn. I needed skeletons and spiders to spawn, that was what I meant. I also located a village even further north from where I currently was, and to my surprise, a zombie siege had spawned. Huh. The local guards however took his sweet ass time giving me a hand. Thanks mate. Day 55. I went to gather more obsidian before I was really interrupted by mobs and whatnot. But before doing so, I once again got distracted, but for a good reason, okay? Let me reassure you that. This was because I found a shipwreck on land encased within the desert. Good old cursed Minecraft world generation. Got home with the resources in tow, made my boat putts and constructed it. And technically it was a long bow because look how much bigger it was compared to my vanilla bow. It was double its size. Day 56, I'm back in the mines. However, around this time with recording each day, OBS just stopped recording on me suddenly. I later found out it was a storage problem, so apologies if there's not a lot going on in the next few days or so. I'll try and keep it interesting. Day 57. I've gone back into the nether to slay some blaze for their heads. So I remember back on day 25 when I upgraded my iron pickaxe to diamond tier and would later need repair kits. Well, to make diamond based repair kits, you need to melt down diamonds with blazing blood. How do you get blazing blood? Excellent question. Allow me to explain. You can get blazing blood one of two ways. One, you encase the entire blaze spawner inside a smeltery and let the guys cook inside to get their blood. This being the safer option, once you actually build the smeltery, around the spawn of course or two you gotta cleave it and start hacking and slashing at these guys in hopes you'll get lucky enough to receive their heads i went with option two as i couldn't be bothered making another smeltery for the blaze spawner but hey that might be something i can do another time however after nearly 30 minutes of grinding i only got three heads one giving me one tenth of a bucket full of blazing blood which is not going to be enough at all so i kind of just gave up on getting what was needed to melt down diamonds just using my diamond pick sparingly day 58 i start working towards my next broad tool which by far is my favorite design and model wise. This being the vein hammer. And what the vein hammer does is very similar to the hammer, but instead of it, it'll specifically mine the vein of block you're currently mining. Meaning if you were to use this on anything other than ore, it'll mine in a certain radius and stop there. However, with ores, if they're not all connected, but there's multiple there, the hammer will only mine the ore blocks that are connected. I hope that made sense. I also start working towards the last and final broad tool that is available within Tinkers, but I'll keep it a secret to them. Day 59. Oh yeah, that's secret. Yeah, it was short lived, I was making a scythe. But with this broad tool now in my grasp, I had now forged and constructed one of every broad tool within Tinker's Construct. Now, with one of my main goals down now, it was time to work towards the others I was yet to complete. And as for the scythe and what this tool does, it's essentially the same as a hoe, but does everything a hoe can in a 3x3 area. Just like how gardening scythes work. I then spent the rest of the day just sorting out all my things and once again making stuff to prepare for the dragon fight. I also forgot to mention I upgraded my backpack to diamonds here, can't recall when that happened. Day 60. I'm brewing myself some regen potions for the dragon fight. Okay, look, I've only fought the dragon a small handful of times in the last 15 years or so I've played this game, and I'm fighting her in hardcore of all things. I'm gonna overthink all the possible scenarios and situations and over prepare. So yes, I'm brewing a bunch of potions that I feel unnecessary. I then gave my backpack an upgrade to allow for on the fly crafting if and when needed when I'm out in adventuring. And to finish off day 60, I went buried treasure hunting and shipwreck looting. Day 61. Remember that village I found back on day 54? I went back to it and kindly asked one of the villagers to become a librarian to get an infinity book and I was thankful to get it on the first few attempts. However, I forgot a crucial item to purchase the book. Emeralds? 
No. I forgot to grab a book, and I had three plus stacks back at home. Now, I didn't know if villagers research trade that wasn't set after their working hours, and I really didn't want to have to wait for another infinity book, so I was against the clock here for a single book. I could have easily gone back home, grabbed the book, and come back, but no. My stubborn backside decided to try and find some wild cows in the wilderness to snatch their leather. I didn't find a cow, but I found a horse, and if any BWO fans are watching, I do apologize. It was for a good cause, I swear. Anyway, I managed to purchase the book before nightfall, and as you can see from me violently shaking my head, I was relieved, happy, and stress-free. Day 62. There wasn't really much of a plan, so I decided to have a chill day and just fish and got some pretty good stuff doing so. And would you know what? I got fish too. Wow. Jokes aside, it was actually kind of nice to just chill and fish for once. Day 63. When traversing across the ocean to find more buried treasure, this bit of loot was very far away that a whole day had passed before I even made it to shore. Day 64. Hey look, a stack of days. I found the buried treasure using a fun little method I like to call Thank you, Reddit. I actually first saw this method from Filzer, which he credited some person from Reddit. All you gotta do is get directly in the middle of the X and have the last white pixel of your player cursor's backside sticking out and then just dig straight down. It worked flawlessly every time I've used it. Afterwards, I go looking for more buried treasure. I, however, did this buried treasure hunting very poorly as I was just going all over the show. And for someone like me who likes to be as efficient as possible, I have done quite the opposite a lot in these 100 days. Day 65. Doing a little more prep work for the dragon fight, I brew some more slow falling potions, I then craft some more lecterns cause soon I go back to the village and hope to do more trading. I also made myself two more books from Tinkers to get a step closer to finishing my goal of getting all six by the end of these 100 days. The first one I make is the Fantastic Foundry, and the next one I make is the Aang Encyclopedia of Tinkering. And all I needed was the Tinkers Gadgetry book, which required Sky Slime, and right now that was something I was not prepared to gather. I also found that you can make cheese within Tinkers. Now I want cheese, damn it. Days 66 to 67. Oh my god, I can't pronounce 60. 60. I went back to the village to use the lecterns I made in the previous days. I was after unbreaking and mending. Here I was trying to use the pathfinding mechanic most villagers have when it comes to workstations. I say most as later I realized the villager I was trying to trade with was a nitwit. Okay, I didn't know he was a nitwit. Not for any unemployed texture on his head, no. I couldn't tell whether he was wearing green or not. Wanna know why? I'm colorblind, that's why. And this joke I will make whenever I get a chance because it's very funny. A blessing and a curse. Like sometimes I cannot tell the difference between purple and blue concrete. It takes me far too long to realize this guy was a nitwit. So I stopped, went around and broke all other workstations in the area. And finally got some villagers to start trading with me. I however make a massive mistake which I didn't realize would happen until I saw the cost of trades. I kind of killed the nitwit in front of the other tradable villagers and in doing so they doubled their prices. I also had my time wasted because the villagers weren't giving me the trades I needed. Thank you Minecraft, very cool. And so I spent two whole days. Then I kind of just gave up and came to the ultimate decision of it is what it is. Day 68. Not much happened. I used my brain power trying to find good upgrades, abilities and modifiers to add to my current lineup of Tinkers tools. I added some sharpness to my axe as that would be very effective against the dragon. In doing so, I did some more research on the dragon to see what type of damage can be dealt to her. Wasn't sure whether adding smite would be good or not and it turns out adding sharpness was the better option. I also added some more levels of swift strike to allow for faster swing speed and lower crit hit times as well. Day 69. Nice. I remember seeing a power upgrade that I could apply to my bow which required a lot of i crystals. So off to the nether I went. Thankfully I wasn't having to travel too far as there was an i geode outside my portal's entrance tunnel. I then used my vein hammer to help gather all the available i crystal blocks efficiently. As well as clear out room for more potential crystals and shards to spawn as I was uncovering all the budding geode blocks within the geode itself. Day 70 to 71. With the i crystal blocks I mined the other day, I used a chopping board I made a while back to help convert the blocks into shards. I then used the shards to add power to my bow. I then spent the rest of the day mining when I noticed a lot of mobs on the minimap. Thankfully they weren't hostile mobs as hostile mobs would have come up as red dots over the grey ones I was seeing. So I dug up towards where this cavern was and oh my goodness, all toys all through these caves. Now if only I found a way to make the ores growing on their shells renewable. There is a way, just didn't have the item on hand. So I then spend the rest of this time in the cave farming off of the ore toises, sneaking and killing these little gremlins called stonelings, which when killed they will drop the iron they're holding as well as something called a hut of diamond. This could be used to make a pickerang. I didn't make one though as it wasn't part of Tinkers, nor was it useful. But upon trying to leave this cavern, I forgot where I dug in from. And when I tell you I went back and forth trying to find the entrance I got in with, I was losing my mind. I couldn't find the entrance and exit I made. I think I went back and forth like five or six 
lifetimes. So I did what any responsible hardcore player would do when lost in a cave with their strip mine below them. I just dug back down to the same Y level, problem solved. Day 72. I wanted to try and get some feather falling on my boots because I wanted to be prepared because I want to be as prepared as possible for fighting the dragon. So I started spending my levels on cheap enchants to either something I wanted eventually came up or feather falling of any level was available. I managed to get two feather falling two books, but the last one I didn't have enough levels for, so I was offered another to mine some quartz for easy XP. I then finally added feather falling to my boots, even though it was level 3, it was good enough for me. Better than the feather falling to be honest. Day 73. Started doing some garden work around the base. I cleared out my farms, made a path down to the edge of the island to make a spot where I could fish, and spent the rest of the day fishing. I then decided to last minute set up a new sugarcane farm using a specific water placement technique to get the most out of growing my sugarcane. Day 74. I decided to finally start setting waypoints for structures that I had found on my map. Turns out I had three villagers thus far. I then made some additional changes to my house by adding a patio-like area, I guess. I'm not a builder. What I was trying to achieve was to somehow connect my home to my portal so I could have everything connected in one cohesive build. I didn't exactly do that, but I was happy with what I built in the end. It then started raining, and for those who don't know what that means, it means when you fish, faster lure rate and higher loot chance as well. So I spent the rest of the day fishing to either I stopped raining or my rod almost died. I decided to stop when the rain stopped because I repaired my fishing rod and continued. Day 75, three quarters of the way there. I was feeling pretty good, but was kind of stalling for time as there wasn't much else I could really do except wait. I made some last minute adjustments to the new part of my house, as well as adding a roof as I didn't do that before. I was then interrupted by a wandering trader. He didn't really have anything of use, but I left him, was tempted to kill him, but I don't want to upset Bulk Swamp. Who knows, might make him a nice home. The rest of the day was me doing some research on modifiers that I was thinking about adding to my Tinker's tools and weapons. Day 76. I went to the nether to grab as much quartz as I could find without having to travel too far or mine for it. I then saw a bastion close by to my portal. Don't worry, I didn't go into it, didn't even find action out thinking about it. I then got lost, so I just dug a tunnel straight towards my portal as I was really close to it. I then used the quartz I got to add sharpness to my cleaver, as at the time I was thinking about using a combination of my cleaver and axes to fight the dragon. I later realized that I preferred dealing stronger damage over quick slices and dices. I usually use a sword in combat, but I was getting more accustomed to using the broad axe that it felt weird using the cleaver to be honest. Day 77. I decided that I wanted to try and make all the Tinker's work sessions that I could before finishing these 100 days. So I made a modifier work table, but I needed more grout. So it was to the ocean floor for sand, gravel, and clay, into the furnace, and done. This was a part of the many new things I was yet to learn within Tinker's, but I wanted to at least craft it and have it ready for a potential 200 days. I then decided to finally get the courage to go to a sky slam island and went to the closest one near me. Day 78. I tower up to the island in the most unconventional way possible, but I did it anyway. I managed to get atop the island, harvest some congealed sky slime blocks, as well as the tree that was available. The liquid inside gave the buff of jump boost, and being high up with a 50-50 chance of death, I was not real happy about this, so I stayed as cautious as possible. Thankfully, if I wanted to get off the island, the ocean was right underneath me. Thing is though, there was an ocean monument near this island too. Day 79. I finally crafted the last book with the Tinkers, thus completing another goal. Now all that was left was to be the dragon and finish the 100 days. I also did a little bit of reading on the new stuff I'm yet to learn and uncover with the Tinkers. Day 80. I looked further into my new book to find a new weapon type called Staff. Had no clue what these things did, but I was going to make them to try them out anyway. We do some science, don't worry. But I needed slimy dirt from the Sky Slime Island and the Earth Slime Island to make two of the three staffs that were available to me at the time. So I went back to the Sky Slime Island first, got some slimy dirt from there, and casually jumped up the side of the island, laying safely into the ocean. Day 81. I then went to the Earth Slime Island to get the dirt I needed from there. So started cooking the dirt into crystals needed to make the stars. And thinking it was a magical weapon, because, you know, it's a staff. I held right click on it. Nothing happened. I smacked the mushroom cat with it. Nothing happened. I didn't know how these things worked or what to do with them. So I concluded my science experiment with the staffs and continued on doing other things to waste time. I then attempted to alloy queen slime as that was needed for the Eichel staff. And for this you need gold, cobalt, and magma cream. I put them into the smeltery and nothing happened. They didn't alloy. Why? Well, that's because, dear viewer, I am stupid and didn't read the full process because I thought I knew what I was doing. 
doing. Turns out you need Blazing Blood as fuel source to alloy these three. So I stopped and would have to wait for another time to do so. Day 82. I started the day off by clearing out most of the big stuff within my smeltery. Then I noticed I had little to no wood. So I turned to what was in my chest. I had no saplings and I really didn't want to go venture out in search to gather some. I then realized I had moss available from that last cave I found all the way back in day 3. But I was unsure if I could get azalea or not from spreading the stuff across my area. Boy was I wrong. I managed to harvest myself some azalea shrubs, planted them down and now I have my source of wood. However, I would soon come to realize that the shrubs needed bone meal as they they weren't spreading in the trees at an efficient rate. But with the wood, shrubs, and the sticks I gathered from the trees I had chopped down, I was content with what I had. I then used the stick scale to make an armor stand to place my first set of iron armor onto as a memorial of how far I had come within these hundred days. And for a finishing touch, I had one of my first Tinker's tools ever constructed. Day 83. Okay, I know I get distracted a lot for random side quests within these hundred days, but today's the day I finally organized my storage and get all that sorted out. And that's what I did. I converted any and all raw ores into their block forms, put any valuables into my backpack, and utilize my current upgraded storage next to my smeltery to its fullest by combining items of similar value and such with each other. I then reduced my three double chests I had been sitting next to my cast chest for who knows how long now into one double chest filled with just miscellaneous stuff. Day 84. I was just playing around with Tinker stuff while also clearing out some of my smeltery. Plotted some of the saplings I got from the slime island so that I could produce a very slow but content amount of slime. I also found that I could make an item called a piggy backpack and what this item essentially does is allows you to carry any or mobs giving them a piggyback as the name suggests but this is at the cost of taking off your chest armor so keep that in mind day 85 i just spent the day harvesting sugarcane and chopping down trees but i also decided to install a new mod to try and help me out with trees namely the rate at which leaves would decay i literally installed a leaf decay mod which enhanced the speed at which leaves decay faster as the name suggests day 86 it was around this time that i wanted to make a creeper farm but i did some research to account for a few things. Turns out, even if you build it with spawnable blocks in a mushroom biome, nothing will spawn, or at least that I know of. So if I wanted this to work, I would need to build out in the middle of the ocean, which was easier said than done. I could do it, just would be really difficult without elytra. And so I started preparing and was determined to get this before beating the dragon. So the materials I needed was 31 stacks plus 20 extra of blocks, 27 stacks plus 48 extra of slabs, 9 stacks plus 6 extra of stairs, 24 stacks plus 24 extra trap doors, 4 campfires, 4 chests, 4 hoppers, 4 glass blocks, and some water buckets. That was a mouthful. The design I was going to use is from someone called Mazecraft. I'll link it in the description. Also, notice how I said going to? Yes, yeah, spoiler, I don't actually get it done. And day 87. And with the fact of knowing that I didn't get this farm built, I still gathered the resources as I would have them ready in case I came back for 200 days. So this entire day was just spent deforesting and collecting wood. Days 88 to 89. Still chopping down wood. Day 90. 10 days remain. I finally finished gathering the resources needed for the farm, but again, wasn't building it as I didn't want to waste 4 or 5 days making a farm that I wouldn't get to use much in these last remaining days. So I spent this time making final preparations and by this I melted down all the gold to my name and made some golden apples. Days 91 to 92. I went back into the nether in search of cobalt, and what better way to mine for it than at ancient debris level? I friendly enough uncovered three pieces of ancient debris. Would have been really funny if I managed to rack up enough to go into the dragon fight with full nether armor. Now that would be over preparing. I then got back home and noticed it was raining, so I fished for the remainder of the day just thinking about things to do to waste time. Day 93. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the cobalt was to make repair kits as most of my tools were made majority out of the stuff. I then start making more final preparations for the dragon fight as well as do some and research. Turns out the dragon can take the damage applied from the effects of potions, namely strength potion if from the player. I'm gonna be honest, I've learned quite a lot throughout these 100 days, and one of them being 100 days is the absolute long bloody time, both in and outside of the game. Day 94. Again, I'm just trying to find ways to waste time. If I really wanted to, I could have gone and fought the dragon, but I mentally didn't feel prepared to fight her yet. So I went down into the mine, mainly to locate where I dug up into the caverns above me, and to locate the bloody entrance to where I had dug it up into from. And the reason I couldn't find it was because the entrance had a block sitting flush with the wall making it look like there was no entrance. 
So the entire time I was in here, running back and forth like a madman, I ran straight past the damn thing. Stupid. Anyway, I cleared my frustrations by mining all the useful resources that I forgot to grab last time. Day 95. It was really the final countdown. Five more days before this was all over, and four more before I fought the dragon. Because I planned to fight her on day 99. But I was back in the nether, searching for gold nugget deposits as I was wanting to make myself a few more golden apples. I was then challenged some death ping pong by another ghast who met its demise I was losing to me. I then, uh, put down? some of the mushroom cows in my area. Day 96, just another day doing meaningless tasks around home. I really am just biting my time here before going to fight the dragon. Day 97, all right, today was the day. Well, not actually. I took off my cobalt armor and donned my diamond set, hung up the cobalt next to my iron, and with it, my very first Tinker's tool I ever constructed. I prepared very last minute things, bred my last two mushrooms together that I had left in my pen, and named the trio Larry, Matilda, and Nate. Then I was off to the stronghold to set up camp. Day 98. I made some adjustments to the staircase and dugout for the portal room, as it was actually, funnily enough, close to the surface. I got real lucky with this world. I then sorted my inventory and got my game plan sorted, and that was pickaxe, axe, and bow in my first three slots, blocks in the fourth, strength, slow falling, and regen potions would be close to the middle, and the rest was food. And as the sun set on day 98, I awaited day 99. Day 99. I took a deep breath. Stood next to the portal, chugged my strength and slow falling, then jumped in. I won't lie when I tell you I was nervous. Like I said earlier in these 100 days, I had only ever beaten the dragon a small handful of times. And hardcore was something I would never dreamed I'd be able to beat the dragon in. So as I got into the end realm, switched up my helm with my pumpkin head as I didn't want to worry about Enderman killing me before the dragon fight. Once on the island, I splashed myself with my regen potion and started taking pot shots at the crystals, taking out the ones surrounded in the iron bars first. By some miracle, my aim wasn't actually too bad. I did however have to block up two of the towers as my arrows just weren't hitting the crystals. I eventually take out all the crystals, now it was time to fight the dragon one on one. I took a few good hits from her fireballs and was flung a little bit out by her wings, but thank Thankfully nothing too drastic happened during the fight. I'm just glad I didn't get flung into the air really high up. Even though I had slow falling, I was still very cautious. But every time she perished, I would crit her 9 times out of 10 with my axe dealing some pretty big damage. She would then fly away, and even though I was half blind from the pumpkin face, I still managed to get a few good shots on her. And with a few final swings, she was down and had been defeated. I'd finally done it. And now I'll let past me take care of it for this next part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, okay, okay. Alright, egg? Where is it? Okay. Oh my goodness. Whew. 100 days. Minecraft Hardcore. It's almost complete. I haven't surpassed 100 days yet. I need to get to day 100 first before I can call it quits there. But we've beat the Ender Dragon. Out of all my time, of all my time playing this game, in the last probably, what, maybe 10 plus years, I have never beaten the Dragon in Hardcore let alone properly in survival. Sure, I'm playing modded Minecraft, but I can now officially say I have beaten the Ender Dragon in hardcore Minecraft. Speaking of, where's the where's the freaking where's the where's the gateway? There it is. Alright. Getting a light train all that, we'll have to wait till 200 days if I continue this. Day 100. I packed up camp, sailed back home, took a screenshot for the thumbnail, which you more than likely saw when you clicked. I then started going over the Tinker's advancements I still had left to complete, as well as a bunch of other stuff I hadn't touched. But I did it. I survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft with Tinker's Construct. And hey, if you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to let me know in the comments or by liking the video. Also, if you want to see a 200 days, do let me know, as I have some new things I want to do, as well as give the world a few new additions. I also still have a whole lot of tinkers to cover as well. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya!